There he is. Way to go, Red. He, he green because he hit right here. Huh? I believe he's got a body. <laughs> he's acting like it. He's going to turn into him. I ain't going to catch him. I don't know if he's going to catch you or not, buddy. Uh, I will if you take the turn the boat the other way. That's Red Berry back there in the back of the boat, but acting like he's got a 12 pounder on there and it weighs he a pound and a half. Hook, but it swallowed the hook. That's all I, right. I used to have him swallow the hook back when I first started, Red. I understand. <laughs> Everybody's got to we have a job. But my question yeah, is, yeah, I understand. Who's pole with it on? <laughs> who's pole with the on? I'm making fun of your fish. Yeah, who's I'm pole with the on? I'm making fun of your fish. Would I make fun of your fish? Yeah. The first fish of the no, day. No, you wouldn't make fun of my hey, fish. It's the biggest you make one we've all day. Listen, this might be the only fish I catch today. It might be the only fish either one of us catches. You never know. I guarantee you. That's a pretty good little chunk. Yeah, he's pound and a half. Pound I'd, and I'd, I'd get excited. I catch one that size. I really would. Come here, baby. Get out of that tree. Power pole down. That's a wacky worm fish, Red. That's, That's a pretty good nice fish. little fish right there, yeah. That's good fish. He's been in my pole. He's been in my pole. He's been in my pole. I love it when they've been in my pole. Which side of the boat you want to be landed on, baby? He said, I don't want to be landed on either side. Aren't they pretty in that clear water? That's a big old male right there. Pow stick sticking. Oh, yeah. Out of his mouth. I'm going to tell you, my Jimmy Houston Daiichi hook is eating their lunch. I can't get them unhooked. They just hooked right there. I ought to bend the barb down. I get them unhooked easier, huh? God. That's what you call hooking a fish right there. You had him hooked pretty good. I mean, good. that is hooking. That's a long, skinny guy. Big old male. I've got this rig wacky style, and uh, I'm going to show you here in a little bit how to rig this wacky style the way that I've got it. Let me get that grass off of there. It got down in those trees. I've got actually a, a rubber O-ring on there. I'm going to just move it down just a little bit and rehook it again. That's the second fish I've caught. I've got that ring on there. I'll show you how to put that ring on there a minute ago on a pal stick. I'm going to go down right under that ring and come out just like that. And that's a wacky style. That right when you throw it out there, it's going to collapse and fall down like that. When you stop it, it straightens out. As it's falling, they come up like, they come up like this. Kind of fall in a U shape. You stop it. And now the only problem is you've got an exposed hook, so like when we're throwing up around brush and stuff like that, you want to have some really good Polaroids on where you can see down that water because you want to you throw it around that brush, it starts to sink down. Now, if you let that hook touch that brush, it's going to get hung up. So sometimes you're going to have to pull it over the top of that and then let it drop. They'll hit that thing usually as it falls. Sometimes they'll hit it just as soon as it hits the water. They see it and it's just there's, there's no weight there, the way I've got it fixed. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you a couple other ways to rig it as the day goes on. And we'll hopefully catch some fish on it that way too, I don't know. But. Oh, come here, baby. Pretty nice little chunk there too, Red. I see him, that's beautiful. Yeah, it's a nice little chunk water. Right there. I can't get over the, the cleanness of this water with all the rain we've that. had. Look at that, look at that. That pretty in that clear water. Wacky rig. There's a lot of guys that I know of. That's about all they fish. They fish it everywhere they go. Don't matter. Come here, baby. That thing's acting acting like. Oh, he's a pretty good sized fish. I guess I'm down there and get him, shouldn't I? <laughs> I swear I hadn't been able to unhook a fish yet. There, sports fans. What I'm talking about right there. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's good sugar. Mm -hmm. Early in the morning. Lucy's gonna get a jealous. A good morning kiss. You know what? Huh? Lucy's gonna get jealous. Lucy get jealous. You yes, ain't Lucy will get jealous. I'm gonna tell her. If I don't get a fish here pretty quick, I'm gonna call her and tell her. Y'all are probably wondering you hear Red talk about Lucy back here. Lucy gonna be getting some loving when you get home. Lucy gonna be this, Lucy getting that. Some of y'all might be thinking, you know, I've been watching that guy since I was a little boy. He's been married to a girl named Chris. What'd he do? She finally kicked his sorry tail 
out of the house. He had to find him another woman. Well, pretty much what happened. No, not really. <laughs> Lucy is my dear. She's a Lucy joy. is my baby doll. She's, uh, we've had her since she's a day old. She's over two years old now. And she's my doll. You want to see Lucy, get on our YouTube channel, Jimmy Houston Outdoors YouTube. And uh, you'll see why I love Lucy. And Lucy loves me. Lucy. She loves on you as much as your lab. I don't know if she loves me. Beamer loves me a lot, but I'm going to tell you, she loves me. They both of them, I never did tie that, never did tie that, uh, that Cajun wake bait on. Now you see what we're doing on this right here. We're fishing very carefully, very slowly, because this is the time of the year when fish are coming in, coming into the bank to spawn. You got males, they're, they're not spawning yet. I mean, we're not seeing any beds. We may see some beds before the day's over. Is it's supposed to get 78 degrees today. And uh, so we may see some beds before the day's over, but we're not seeing any beds. We're fishing the areas where beds will be. That's what you want to do. You want to look for areas where the beds will be. When you get in those areas, you want to stop and peruse them very, very well. You want to throw your anchor out. Of course, we throw our anchors out by pushing a button, which is the way to do it. But, uh, and fish very carefully, very slowly. And, uh, and when you catch a fish, really concentrate on that area because normally you'll catch the male bass first. And it might be a pretty good sized one, like that one back there. I was a pretty good sized one I caught, but he was just a male. And now that wasn't the same female. I mean, that, 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 but mostly the females, they're, they're just roaming. They're kind of going up and down the bank. So, so that, that female might have ended up getting on a bed that that male might end up making. But uh, so you just want to fish carefully and easily, and that's, that's what we're going to do. We have got the program going now, Mr. Redberry. <laughs> You know, We've you can got always the program tell, going. You can always tell the amateur and the pro. How's that? The pro always front seats the amateur. Don't give him a chance at nothing. <laughs> That's a big, old, <sighs> big old fat girl there. Come here, baby doll. Look at the color. Oh, come I mean, here. Look, look at the look color at that on that fish, Jimmy. Look at the belly on that booger. Look at the belly on that booger, not this booger. Golly, these fish are hooked. <sighs> That is the best hook. We got great hooks to fit. Look at the belly on that one. Now that's a, that's what a fish is supposed to look like there. That's a female. She's a beautiful fish. She's gonna lay a lot of eggs, have a lot of babies. And you're a, you're a good girl. There's no tongue sticking out, no tail sticking out of her mouth. Uh, I thought there might be a tail sticking out of her mouth where she had eaten a bluegill or eaten another bass or something. Now that's four or five fish I've caught on that worm. That's one of the things about, I can't get many more on it. Look at it. It's just about wrecked. It's a lucky strike pow stick. Now one of the things about this worm, as opposed to any other sinking worm, I'm saying sinking, not stinking, is that it's six inches long and not five. So if you're fishing with a Texas rig on it, uh, you can you can actually bite it off and still have quite a bit. And I'm gonna just slide that down a little bit. See, I'm gonna take it. Just, it's hard to slide that ring. I'll slide that ring down just a little bit. You still want it relatively close to the center. It doesn't have to be centered. Bring your hook right in under that ring. Now, with that ring, it keeps you from losing it. I've caught four fish or five fish on that bait, and I still got the bait. Also keeps and, you from tearing it up. Yeah, it keeps it keeps them from getting all tore up. Yeah, that's right. And you know, once it gets tore up a little bit, of course it comes off and you lose it. There he is. Well, I tell you, those power poles are worth their weight in gold right now. What do you think? Yes, sir. I see, I got the hooked fish, foul hooked or something. Look, look at this fish. I got him hooked to the tail or something. He act like a big fish. Look at there, that's what you call it. Look at there how I caught that fish, will you? Yeah. Look at there. Look at there. <laughs> That's what you call a good hook, catch him like that. Look at that. Hooked him in the belly. It's an upside down fish. How do you, how do you bite that upside down? Look at that. Hooked him in the belly. Is that yes, strange? I'm not get it out of him without hurting him. <laughs> it's one of the smallest ones I've caught all day. Now how, look now look at here. Now here, here here's the deal. My ring is about off of there. It's slipped down a lot, so I'm gonna go ahead and take that ring off and I'm gonna put it on a new worm. I'll show you how I do that here in a minute. And I'm gonna hook, I'm gonna rig this thing Texas style. I'm gonna show you a new way to rig it. Not a new way, but a different way than what I've been doing. I'm hang on to that, I don't wanna lose that. 
Okay, now I'm going to come back in here. And I don't have a weight on here. I've got 15 pound. 15 pound high seas fishing line. Lay that right down there. I've got 15 pound. I've got a 5 aught Daiichi Jimmy Houston hook on there. Come up here and come in about a half an inch, just like that. They get about a half an inch right there. Come swing around where I've got that there. I've got the point of the, the hook right there at the top. Not down in here, but right, right at the top. I'll come back and I'll lay that down there. And right where that bend is, put my thumbnail in there right where that bend is. I'll go through just a little bit of an angle up. Now that's perfectly straight when I do that. That way I'll come back in and just barely hook that right there. Barely. Just barely had skin hooked. Now that's a pure Texas rig without a slip sinker. So that's fishing a sinking worm without a slip sinker. Go right back out there at the same spot again since we're power pole down. We haven't moved an inch. We'll make the exact same cast. Now I don't have a wacky rig. I've just got a sinking worm Texas rig. Now the advantage of that is we can fish that around a lot of brush and cover. It'll just slide right over a log. And uh, when I set the hook on that, and I thought it was a big and red. Yes, sir, I did too. Whenever I seen you bow up, it's amazing how when you have them hooked differently, how how they pull, isn't it? Yes, sir. They pulling pulling pretty good, isn't he? That's good right there. That's good right there, Mr. Red. That's a nice chunk. A nice chunk. Oh yes, baby. Yes, baby. Now, you see, now all these fish have been hooked exactly alike, except for that one. This hook fish is double hooked. See here how the hook is in here and the barb is down under there? You could drag that fish back to the boat ramp and he wouldn't get off. I gotta have pliers to get him loose too. <laughs> see that hook is down in there, right up in there. So you gotta get that part out. And then, then you can take the rest of it out of him. Jeez. I'm telling you, it is uh, amazing. That's a nice bass right there, Mr. Red. Yes, sir. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Mm. You want one of these colors? <laughs> Does a blind dog hunt? <laughs> what color are you throwing? I don't know what color it is, but I just pulled it out of the back. I don't know. I'll look on, I'll look on the bag and see. I'm throwing Small one here. I want that one that Red lost. We might catch that fish for the day's over. One of the great things about this time of the year is you can do that. You can, you can lose a big fish, and if that's their territory, they're not going to swim 200 yards away. They're going to be in that same territory. You come back later in the day, and you got a good, good shot at catching that fish. I don't. I swear I've not unhooked a single fish. I finally got that one. I finally got that one. Yeah, that's a good fish. Of course, Texas style, Texas style, your, your bait's going to go up your line like this. Now, here's what I like to do on it. I'll take and get right down here and just put that back through and carefully work that through to keep from tearing that worm up. Come right back to there. Carefully put that back in. Now, if I get torn, torn up too bad, and then there I am back with a perfectly straight uh, rig again. Now, you see where that's indented in? Now, this is the exact same worm that I started out on. I caught four or five on this worm. Don't you tell Lucky Strike I told you about this because they want you to look, use a lot of worms. <clears throat> but that's it. I've caught seven or eight or nine fish on that worm. That's another thing about using a pal stick as opposed to some of the other worms that's out there. A lot of them tear up real easily. You're lucky to get one or two fish off of a worm. In fact, sometimes you can only get maybe like five or six out of a whole pack of, t of eight or ten. Here's an area that you want to look for. The type places you want to look for early in the year like this, if you can find an area that's got individual trees along the bank, for some reason, oh, there's a fish right there out in front of that one. That fish is swimming toward me or he's really tiny. He's swimming toward me and he's really tiny. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> he was both red. I noticed. Yeah, he's hooked outside the mouth too. He's really tiny, he's really tiny, and he was hooked up. But one of the places that bass like to spawn for some reason is they like to spawn out in front of trees, like that tree right there. You throw right in front of them, 
and the, usually the male will build a he'll build it like up under that limb you see that limb coming out uh, you know they, they very much like a, a buck deer makes a scrape you know just kind of look for those same type places where you think a buck might make a scrape and you want to fish out in front of them. <coughs> and uh, you don't really have to get in there and actually look for that bed necessarily and there's no beds yet anyway I mean we haven't seen a single bed at all uh, but, uh, but we're, we're fishing the areas where the beds will be, and what we're catching is a lot of males in those areas. In fact, I caught that fish, you know, about pretty much right out in front of that tree. But now there might be a female up in that area swimming around. Now, she might not be right there, but she might be out here in between us and the tree somewhere. We could catch her clear right out in here even. So, you, But you find those areas like that fish right straight out in front of them. Now, when you get into all those trees like that, obviously that's a good place because there's a lot of stuff in the water that they can get around. They like to find something. And, and one of the reasons they're like that, you see up there, you see all that grass and moss looking stuff that's up under that tree. Uh, they get down under that and, and hide and build that, that bed right out in front of it. It's just, the, that's the kind of places, if you're, if, you're, if, you're go, if you're going fishing down a bank and you see one individual tree standing there by itself like that, fish out in front of it this time of the year, most likely you're gonna catch a fish. There he is. It did hit it too. I read, I knew there was a little one or you wouldn't have had me throw back in there. If it had been big and you'd have caught him. <laughs> you tricked me. <laughs> hey, you didn't really trick me. I knew the deal. <laughs> I don't know, Jimmy. I couldn't tell how big he was. He's probably a big one. <laughs> That's all right, because I, like I like catching them any size. But I like catching them bigger, better. All right, here I'm gonna go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go one more deal, a little shorter. I'm down to about four and a half inches. Four and a half <laughs> inches ain't bad. That'll catch one. The key is getting that worm straight all the time. You want that worm straight? No matter what, that's what you want. You want it straight. Concentrate on getting it straight. Now you can do that with your thumb. Make sure you. You put your thumb over there, wherever you, wherever that, put your thumb where that bend of that hook is. When you do that, then you put the point in right there, your worm's gonna be straight every single time. <coughs> do that anytime you're worm fishing. Okay, this third technique I'm gonna show you is really a killer technique when the wind starts blowing. I've got a 16th or 32nd ounce slip sinker. That one right there is a 16th. I also use a 32nd. 16th or 32nd ounce slip sinker. And I'm just gonna rig this Texas style now. The big deal is the size of the sinker. And I might even, probably should go with a 32nd, but we're kind of out of the wind back in this pocket, so I'm gonna go ahead and just put on a 16th. A 16th or a 32nd ounce slip sinker, and all I'm gonna do is go ahead and rig this pure Texas style. I've got 20 pound high seas fluorocarbon coated line on here. And, uh, and I'm gonna just do just a straight Texas style. Now what this is gonna allow me to do, obviously, if I wanna do any pitching or flipping, if I wanna get this, drive this down through a little bit of the grass that's, that's growing back in this pocket, I'll be able to do that. And also, you know, we were out there in the wind a minute ago, is it a pocket? We just been going fishing these pockets about a third of the way back, but uh, get, uh, get in these pockets and, and some of them have been pretty windy. But this third technique is especially good in the wind it's also especially good if you've got any reeds, like some of the Florida waters where we fish around a lot of lead, reeds where we're sort of, uh, you know, flipping the bait, pitching the bait in there. Put just a small slip sinker. Now, not a big one. You don't want the slip sinker to dominate it. And the other thing it'll allow you to do, that little small slip sinker will keep that bait from what I call sailboating through the water. What happens when you throw that out there without any weight on it a lot of times is the, 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 you get a bow in your line and that bow in your line will sailboat across the top of the water and it drags your worm behind it. And when it's doing that, you don't normally, you don't normally get too many bites. So you could put that little small slip sinker, 16th ounce, 16th ounce or, or 32nd ounce on there <laughs> and it will stop that big bow that the wind blows in your line. It's just exactly what you need to do when you get out there and you're catching fish on a sinking worm without a weight. It's just add not much weight. 32nd or 16th cent slip sinker, and then turn it into a straight Texas rig. Oh, that's a nice fish. <laughs> Power pull down. That was my sinker on right there. 
Yep, that is my sinker on. Yeah, it's a good fish. Had another one with it. It's a good fish. Let me get over. Had another one with it. Did he? Yeah, he did. I didn't see it. I, I was fooling around. Yeah, he sure was. Come here, baby. Come here, sugar bear. Ooh, yeah. That was with my sinker on right there. Yeah, I see. So I've caught them all three ways now with a, with the sinker, without a sinker, Texas rig, with a sinker, Texas rig, and wacky rig. I love it. I love it. I love it. A little 16th ounce sinker. That's all I'm using. And it could have a 30 seconds on there. wouldn't hurt a bit, but that's an awful tiny sinker right there. We started out today. We started out today with the uh, using the uh, the rubber O-ring on my pow stick. Let me show you just exactly how easy this is to put this on there. We actually used to do this with a uh, a ballpoint pen. We'd take a ballpoint pen and take half of it off, and we'd put these on here. But now they've got an actual tool. You can buy this tool right here at Bass Pro Shop. Uh, it's just called a uh, an O-ring tool. Is what it's called. And uh, you, uh, you put these little rubber O-rings on. I like to use red, but you know, I use black also. And see, so you slide them over it like that. Now, here's what you do. You want to take this bait. Now, I like to put them somewhere down or about the middle, maybe on the inside of that little ring right there. So all you're going to do is you stick this in there like such. Slide that down. However, wherever you want it, right in the middle. Slide it down. All you got to do, and once you get to there, make sure you got it where you want it. Pop that off of there. Now you've got it in there. Now all you need to do now is take your hook and hook right inside of there. And that's how you rig a wacky rig worm with an O-ring. These are a little expensive tools. They just cost a couple, two or three bucks. And you can buy these, these rings right here. I actually, I actually, as a matter of fact, this is a ring that I had on this morning. It's a black one. And let me tell you what you can do. You can just unscrew the, those and I can put that ring back on there. I have to use pliers to do it, but uh, this is how you put them on. I actually do it with a screwdriver, but it's got a Phillips screw in there. Let's see, get those down on there. I got, I got about a full house here on this already. Probably not worth this to put one ring back on there, what I'm doing here. <coughs> Take that off and I'm going to put that back on there. Screw it back down in there. Real easy deal. It's like I said, you really need to use a Phillips screwdriver. It doesn't matter whether it's real tight like I had it or not. I just had it tight to keep it from coming off that's not going to come unscrewed right there that's it that's your easy little tool right there to do it with I carry them in a little plastic box when I'm at it like this I'll I've got three or four of them it's better to buy more than one buy you three or four of them stick them in a bag of worms ready to go yeah <laughs>